All right, this is the third video about coding. And um, in this video, we're actually going to do the coding. And then probably there's going to be one more wrap-up video. All right, uh, first I want to present to you a definition of coding. I will email this to you also. It might be easier to read there, but just read it and think about it for a bit. And I'm going to show you a short example and have you do a short example. All right, um, so this is a bit of text, and somebody has coded it, and they coded this bit of text with the word security. So it says, I noticed the grand majority of homes have chain link fences in front of them. There are many dogs, mostly German shepherds, with signs and fences that say, beware of dog. All right, so the first thing I want to point out is that coding is very subjective. I might have read this, and I might have coded it fear, or anxiety, or if I was coming from a different perspective, I might have uh, coded it something completely different. Maybe I would code it home, right? So it's pretty subjective. But the basic idea is it's you have some text generally, and you put a word to it that captures the meaning. Now, th I really, really like this definition um, because it, it emphasizes the fact that it's, uh, it's a summative and a summative statement, but it, it attaches to something that's salient, essence capturing. So not every bit of text that you might have collected data for necessarily gets a code. It should be text that has some essence that's important or evocative uh, that you're going to code. Right? So um, I guess I'm not going to ask you to do it because I think when I had done it in class, I had presented without codes and then asked people to code it. So my point here on this, this bit of example is that you can use more than one code for the same bit of text. Now, really the way this was done was the first code is for that first sentence, the second code is for the next bit, <coughs> excuse me, and so on. Um, but there could actually be two codes for the same bit short bit of text, like this first sentence might have gotten two codes. That's not impossible. So when you're coding text, um, you're going to come up with short words that attach to certain bits of text. That's the main idea. All right, here's the practice. And I will try to email this to you so that you can code it. I um, want you to put some codes to this and send them, uh, post them on to D2L. There's uh, one, two, and three, so there's actually already some codes that have been done by this for this by somebody else, but you can ignore those numbers. You can make the codes wherever you think they make sense. So pause the video, go ahead and code it, post to D2L. So I'll be interested to see what you wrote, but this is how somebody else wrote it. Uh, so they coded the first sentence as middle school hell. Uh, obviously, they're bringing their own perspective to it. Okay. So I hope you get the idea of uh, the basic idea of this would be inductive coding because we don't have a theoretical framework that we're starting with. Um, so I'm going to get you doing some coding next. Well, this is what we did in class. But uh, instead, I'm going to send you uh, two that are portrayed and two that are experienced. Um, I don't actually remember what, which one yours was. Uh, so whichever one yours was, I want you to sub substitute your data for the ones I'm sending you. So in other words, you're going to use three of mine and one of yours. And if yours was portrayed, you're only going to use one of the two portrayed I sent you or vice versa for experienced. Hope that makes sense. An inductive approach. And then I'm going to have you code it again in a deductive approach um, so you can see the difference and in, in how it plays out differently depending on whether it's inductive or deductive. So how are you going to do the coding? Well, people do use all kinds of methods. Um, if you're using vast amounts of data, if you have lots and lots of interviews and 
lots of data. You might use software to help you with the coding. But most people do qualitative analysis in old-fashioned ways. Uh, sometimes they cut, they make several copies of the text and then cut it up and then put the pieces of paper in piles and write names on the piles. A um, little bit more modern than that, but not quite as sophisticated as using actual software to do the analysis, is using Microsoft Word or Excel to do your analysis. Um, so one way to do it in Word, and this is what I'm going to ask you to do so that I can see it, uh, is use highlight colors. So you'll highlight a bit of text, say in yellow, and then um, attach a comment to it, insert a comment using the revision features in Word. And the comment will be whatever your code is. And if you're going to use that same code again and again, um, each time you do it, use the same color if possible. Right? So you're limited to, I don't know, eight colors in Microsoft Word, but you could also use, instead of highlighting colors, you could bold the text or you could um, make the text red. So do something to show the difference of the text uh, and attach a comment to it to do the code. I think that's the best way. I've got some other ideas here about using columns and tables and, you, and using Excel, but I think the best way is for you to do it in Word, just highlight and add codes, okay? Uh, so this is a big job. This will take you a couple hours at least, I would think. Um, so you're going to pause the video here and then come back to it. Actually, let me stop the video here and start a new video for the next part, right? Inductive coding four sets of transcripts, three of the ones I send you, plus one that you, you use. Uh, use highlighting and post your uh, coding to D2L.